The cost of change curve for software is how much it costs to change a piece of software, to add a feature or change a feature over time. So if you think of an x-axis representing time and a y-axis representing how much it costs to change uh, the piece of software, that's your cost of change curve. And many people assume that this curve is exponential or at least steeply rising in a linear fashion, that it's much more expensive to make a change to a piece of software uh, for the further along you get in the life cycle of a project or, or, or a piece of software. Agile, on the other hand, uh, both exploits and enables this idea of a f much flatter cost of change curve. Uh, we assume that we can work incrementally, that we can change our mind at any point along the way because it's only going to be marginally more expensive to make a change six months down the road than it would be to put that change in today. Now the way that we enable a flatter cost of change curve, one of the ways is to think about this idea of transaction costs. A transaction cost is like an ATM fee. It's the cost associated with doing what you actually want to do. I like to explain transaction costs by thinking about the activity of painting a room. So painting itself uh, is, is, one, is the work you want to get done, but the setup to do the painting and the tear down after you're done painting uh, involve a lot of work. You've got to uh, move all your furniture, put down drop cloths, tape around all the fixtures, then you've got to clean up after you're done. Those are all transaction costs associated with the work you really want to do, which is the painting. And because of that, you're going to paint a lot once you incur the transaction costs of setting up and tearing down for painting. Contrast painting to something like knitting, where as far as I can tell from watching my wife, the transaction costs are minimal. Uh, they involve picking up the bundle of yarn and the needles and the project from wherever you last left it, and you're off and running. So knitting is an example of something with almost no transaction costs. And because of that, you can work in very short batches, short cycles. Five minutes here, ten minutes tomorrow, wait two days, pick it up for another half hour. That's possible to do when you have low transaction costs, as opposed to painting, which you're going to do in long cycles and big batches. You can have a, a two-line change to a piece of software where I only have to change two pieces of code, but first I've got to find that code, I've got to understand it, I've got to make the change, then I've got to integrate that back in, make sure I haven't broken anything, and find a way to get that all deployed to production. So we have a lot of practices in Agile that help us to lower these transaction costs. We have things like pair programming and a team room to make it so that more people understand the, the code, that it's easier to find the code that needs to be changed. Continuous integration coupled with test-driven development to make it safer to make these small changes and get feedback right away on if you've accidentally broken anything. And then the practices of continuous uh, delivery, continuous deployment, which are becoming more and more talked about these days, to make it much cheaper to deploy a change to production. So you have these technical practices, all of which work together to, uh, to minimize these transaction costs and thereby flatten the cost of change curve.